Welcome to our film show here on Arts24. Well, this week, Venice is the must-be location for cinema lovers as the festival holds world premieres of some of the most anticipated films coming up over the next few months, including Luca Guadagnino's Queer, starring Daniel Craig, and Pablo Lorraine's Maria, starring Angelina Jolie. But they're not the only huge names on its red carpet over the next few days. For more from the event, we can now cross to our film critic, Emma Jones, in Venice. Emma, hi. Now, it does feel a bit like it's one of the starriest Venice film festivals in recent memory. (laughs) You're so right. Uh, the, fest- the Venice Film Festival director, Alberto Barbera, had said the red carpet might be a bit overcrowded this year. It certainly feels that way because as one household name leaves Venice, another appears. Really, let's look at some of the biggest names who've been at the Venice Film Festival this year. The last person you saw there was, of course, French acting legend Isabelle Huppert, who's head of the jury this year at the Venice Film Festival. Some difficult decisions for her and the jury ahead, I'd say. And I should say that that Hollywood celebrity wave hasn't quite crashed yet because there is the Joker premiere at the Venice Film Festival. Joker, folie à deux, with Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, heavyweights all the way. Well, let's talk about the world premiere of Luca Guadagnino's film Queer. This is an adaptation of the William S. Burroughs novel starring Daniel Craig. How has it gone down at the festival? Yeah. You know, broadly speaking, I think the reaction from international critics has been very positive. And I think particularly for Daniel Craig's performance, I think one critic called him strangely magnificent in the movie, and I'm inclined to agree with him. So Daniel Craig is playing an older man, an addict called Lee. He lives in Mexico City uh, post-World War II, and he falls in love with a much younger man called Allerton. Now, that's played in a probably film breakout role by Drew Starkey. It is is a love story. It's also extremely erotic, so expect a lot of online chit-chat about that role for Daniel Craig. And indeed, in the press conference at Venice, he was asked about the possibility of a gay James Bond. But actually, I think this role in Queer, really, is going to be the role that dispels that image of him as James Bond. He is both very funny, funny and extremely vulnerable, too. And it's a reminder to me of a throwback to some of his pre Bond roles such as The Mother and Lair Cake. Sounds great. Well, let's take a look at Queer and hear from Daniel Craig and co star Drew Starkey about working with some very respected movie people. Quite a lot. Yeah, He's yeah. still doing it. Really. <laughs> I was familiar with both of their work. I was fans of both of their work. And, uh, you know, I think coming into any situation is nerve wracking, and there was an extra layer on top of that. But, they, I mean, very quickly, that kind of. That that kind of such shit. an easy decision. I mean, we'd been, you know, finding oh. Allison was a, was, a, was a process, as it always is. And, and then um, Luca just said, I, have, I think I've, I've found him. And showed me um, a reading you did, oh, I think from home probably, right? Yeah, yeah. Was it? I, and he yeah, showed me so. this on his phone. I just went, that's him. And it was like, it was easy. So Queer is in competition at Venice for the Golden Lion. Emma, do you have any idea yet of which film might win that top prize? Yeah, it's difficult to say. As well as queer, I'd say that a few films have got quite a lot of buzz. One is Walter Salas. He's a Brazilian director. The last film he made was back in 2012. This film he's got at the festival I'm Still Here is set in the 1970s and it's about disappeared people during military rule in Brazil. It's sombre, it's heartfelt. It got a 15-minute standing ovation after its premiere. And if we're counting standing ovations, another film got a very 
similar 15, 16 minute standing ovation. And that was Pedro Almodovar's uh, first film in the English language called The Room Next Door. Now, Tilda Swinton stars in this movie as a terminally ill woman. She asks her best friend, played by Julianne Moore, to help her go in peace <laughs> and at a time of her choosing. And Julianne Moore has uh, been in Venice and really talking about uh, that theme of female friendships that uh, Almodova is exploring. very rarely see a story about female friendship, and especially female friends who are older. Um, and I don't know that there's another filmmaker in the world that would do that other than Pedro. Julianne Moore there speaking about her latest film. I believe Nicole Kidman's new release has also been causing quite a stir. Yeah, there's been a lot of critical buzz around Baby Girl. Lots of people, lots of critics talking, you know, if this is kind of almost revolutionary in terms of the female sexual gaze in, in cinema. So it is a film called Baby Girl, stars Nicole Kidman, Antonio Banderas, Harris Dickinson. And it's made by a Dutch filmmaker called Helena Rain. And it's a story of a female CEO who starts a big affair with her much younger intern. OK, there's no film clip available for that film yet, but we can hear from mm. Nicole Kidman telling reporters mm. at Venice what she thinks the film is about. I think this film is obviously, yes, it's about sex. It's about desire. It's about um, uh, your inner thoughts. It's about secrets. It's about marriage. It's about um, truth, power, consent. Um, so... Language for sex, it's so complicated, that answer, because what is the... This is one woman's story, and this is, I hope, a very um, liberating story. Sounds like familiar territory for Nicole Kidman there. Well, let's leave uh, Hollywood to one <laughs> side for the moment, a yeah. shift to French talent, because in addition to Isabelle Huppert, there's been a strong French sure. presence at the festival. There has indeed. Uh, the veteran filmmaker Claude Lelouch has been in Venice. He's been showing his film Finalement, or Finally, except he says he's got no intention of retiring. He also picked up an Achievement Award. That's called the Glory to the Filmmaker Award. One of my favourite films in competition this year is a French film. It's called Les Enfants Après Eux, or Their Children After Them. It's um, an adaptation by two twin brothers, the Bukherma brothers, and it's an adaptation of a very successful French novel uh, by Nicolas Mathieu. It's set in the 1990s. It's a coming-of-age story in northeastern France. Gilles Lelouch puts in a great performance and he's also a producer in the film. Now, I spoke to the Bukerma brothers and asked them about why they wanted to make a cinema cinematic adaptation of the book. I think it echoed so much with uh, our own... Uh... Uh, adolescence and our yeah. childhood, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, so, I mean, we just, it was just an opportunity we couldn't miss, because it was, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not our story from the beginning, but yet it's the, probably the one that's, uh, that's, that's the most cool. personal, I guess, in the end. Yeah. Mm. And the book also is extremely cinematographic in the way it's written. Yeah. Uh, it's extremely visual, so while reading it, we could see images from a film. You could tell that Nicolas Mathieu is a movie lover. Should mention a couple of the other films from France in competition as well. Uh, there's been Trois Amis or Three Friends by Emmanuel Mouret and starring Camille Cotin. And some critics have said it very much has a Woody Allen vibe, except that it's set in Lyon, uh, not New York or any other capital city. And uh, it's really about the interconnected love lives of three female friends. And one more film, The Quiet Sun. That's definitely worth a mention. It's by two filmmaking sisters this time Delphine and Muriel Coulin and it stars Vincent Landon, Benjamin Voisin and that's a look really at a young man getting involved in far-right politics in France. Oh, looks like it's going to be an interesting few months coming up here for French cinema then. Mm. Well, we mentioned that Venice has not been short of sure. A-listers this year. Two of them are in one of the big Hollywood films <laughs> showing at the festival. Emma, tell us more. 
Yes, well, I think this is, I think as you saw in the pictures at the start of the show, Brad Pitt and George Clooney uh, turned up together to promote their new film, Wolves, at Venice. And I think this has been one of the most highly anticipated appearances of the festival. Certainly the queues to try and get into the press conference were truly hilarious. So many broken-hearted journalists there, all desperate to get a glance at Brad and George back together for their first uh, on screen appearance since the Ocean's Eleven franchise. Now they play a couple of uh, hitmen who are called to a hotel to uh, clean up the same mess, shall we say. Here's George Clooney talking about why they thought it would be a good idea to get the old gang back together. Brad and I have been doing this a long time separately and together and, and part of what was fun about this was, you know, there is a rhythm to talking over top of one another. Right, there really is. It's like it's not just blasting. You have to be able to hear one thing to be able to answer it, but not and, and not step all over each other. And I, it just felt like from the minute I read the script, from the minute we got on the set, it, that sort of banter, the way we kind of blast at each other the whole time, just felt easy. <laughs> it should be said that Wolf's by John Watts isn't really auteur cinema. It's definitely a commercial endeavor, and it really is all about Brad Pitt and George Clooney on screen together. I don't think I recall yeah, like the names of the characters, really. The they should just be called like Brad and guy. George. And the film is a really good sense of humor. It's very much a sly wink. You've got some really quite fun jokes in there about the age, but really it is all about these film stars' stupendous charisma together on screen. And if you think about it, maybe that's not a bad thing. <laughs> OK, well, I think that will, as you say, be enough to get people into cinemas. Thank you so much for that roundup, <laughs> Emma. We'll leave you with Thank a look you. at the Pitt Clooney double act in Wolves. Otherwise, you can get more movie and cultural news here on Arts24 every day and on our social media too. Clearly have a situation here. The only course of action is for you to work together to clean up this mess. No. It's not how I work. This is not how I work. Oh. It's a different thing now. It's gonna be a long night. Where'd you get the drugs? I don't know what you're talking about. Where did you get the drugs? Talk.